Please turn it off. Part D. We have to show us the magnitude of AU. This is the norm of AU. This is the magnitude of A. This here is you, right? 
if you love you. And by definition, square root of, square root of the dark part of u would be sub, um, is the norm of u. Right? So part is done. Alright, any questions before we move on? Alright, let's do part C. Okay, we will show this then. So the magnitude of U dot V. It's both, right? It's like that. Are they one and the same thing? Yeah, it's the same thing. So, so I think this is what you're saying. You're saying that. So let's say the dark part of U V here, right? You can rewrite this as U one, U two, U three here. Yes. And the dark part of uh, V one, V two, V three, right? Yes. And then you said that you would have like U one, V one plus U two, V two, right? This and this here are what? They are the same. same. Okay. But this is by definition, and this is the, by definition we can show this. So for the exam, sh sh can we choose either one, or do you prefer uh, like the cosine in some cases? You can choose. Okay. Yeah. 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 Right. So here we have the uh, the magnitude of the dark part of U and V. By definition, we have the magnitude of um, the length of U times the length of V times cosine theta. But theta is an angle between vector U and vector V. So that this gives, and the magnitude of u, what we did earlier, is the same as the um, square root of, of the dark part of u and u, and u and u, and times the, uh, the, length, the length of vector v is the square root of the dark part of u and v. So we said the norm is equal to the square root of the dark product, not the magnitude. Yeah. Uh, I think earlier in question A, we showed this here. Let's see, uh, maybe to a view here, right? Um, because the dark part of um, square root of the dark part of U and U is square root of um, U square here. This is equal to U here. So, um, uh, the magnitude of u here is the square root of the dark part of u and u. The, the, the length of vector v is the square root of the dark part of v and itself. Right, so, we bring cosine theta down here. So, this gives the um, square root of the dark part of u and u. By definition, is the map is the norm of u. By definition, this is the norm of v and times cosine theta. Okay. So that we can rewrite this as right, the magnitude of the dark part of u and v equals um, the norm of u times the norm of v times the magnitude of cosine theta. Okay. All right, we need to show that um, the left-hand side of this equation here must satisfy um, must 
satisfy this inequality here. This is what we need to show. Right? We need to show that the left, the right next of the left part of U and V is at most um, the multiplication between the norm of U and the norm of V. Right? So what we'll, we'll get down here. Right? So how do we get from here to here? So guys, thanks. Could we not say that cosine is a function ranging from 0 to 1? Yeah, yeah, right. Cosine theta here, the magnitude value here. This implies the magnitude of uh, the dark product of U and V uh, is at most the norm of U times the norm of V. Since the magnitude of cosine theta is at most 1. Why do we why do we know this cosine of theta is m of one? Why do we how do we know that the magnitude of cosine of theta is m of one? Anyone know why? Because of the multiple p between zero and five. Uh huh. And the zero and one. Okay. So you have theta right here, right? And we claim that if we take cosine theta, so suppose this is a unit circle, right? No. No need to be a unit circle, any circle. Any circle. Okay. So which means that the radius of the circle can be bigger than one or can be smaller than one. Okay. How do we know that cosine of theta here? If we take the magnitude of cosine of theta here, it's the most one. This is what we claim, right? This is true. But why is it true though? Anyone have a suggestion why is it true? Okay. Right. So, cosine, this is a uh, right triangle here. Right. So, if we call this x, we call this r. What is cosine theta? x over r. And what's the relationship between x and r? Right? X must be always uh, at most R, right? This is X here. This is R here. Right? So X, um, the magnitude of X is always at most R. So which means that um, the magnitude of X divided by R is at most 1. Um, so this implies cosine of theta and magnitude is at most 1. Okay? All right. Oh, that was just for fun, right? We don't have to prove that. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is for your understanding okay. why it is true that the magnitude of cosine theta is the most one. Uh, yeah. This is some sort of side note. Uh, All right. So here, so that we, since this is true, so we can conclude that from here to here, we can conclude that the uh, magnitude of the back part of U and V is at most the multiplication between the norm of U and the norm of V. Um, so we have proxy done. Questions before we go to part B. Part B. We need to show that here the norm of U plus V is at most the norm of U plus the norm of V. Thank you. 
take the normal point, uh, factor u plus factor b. This is our both as the normal factor u plus the normal factor b. Okay. So here we note that uh, the left hand side and the right hand side of the inequality. Um, it's not negative, right? Okay. Now, uh, remember, we are given by this definition, right? The norm of a vector is the square root of the dark product uh, of the vector with itself. Okay. We have the square root here. So, here, the norm of u, right? Equals the square root of the dark product of u and u. This implies um, the norm of u squared equals the dark product of u and u, right? Okay. So if we can show that um, um, okay. if, we, if we can show that um, the norm of u plus b squared is at most the norm of u plus the norm of b squared here. Then we can conclude that the norm of u plus the norm of b is at most the norm of u plus the norm of b, right? This is the uh, uh, side of Add 
use one plus this one, use two plus this two, and use three plus this three. The part here is one plus this one, two plus this two, and three plus this three.
Okay, guys, what should we do next? All right, we get down here, we have this term, we have this term, we have this term. Why do, um, why do I write this equation in this way? You, you notice that um, I group the term u1 square plus and u2 square and u3 square in one group, and then I group v1 square, v2 square, v3 square in one group, and then I group u1, v1, u2, v2, u3, v3 in one group, right? Why do we do that? So what is u1 square plus u2 square plus u3 square? U dot U, right? Okay. U dot U. And V1 square plus V2 square plus V3 square is V dot V. And then plus 2. Um, so what is U1 V1 plus V2 V2 plus V3 V3? U dot V, right? 